What is happening, everybody? I believe we're live now. So for everybody who's been waiting, I'm really, really excited for what we have here today. For those who don't know what's about to go down, I got my man, Jacob Karras. Don't know if I'm pointing the right way here on the screen, <laughs> which, which side Facebook's going to choose to put it on. Uh, but we got Jacob Karras live with us tonight to give us a little bit of a preview of what he's going to be covering on the upcoming Cult Builders Live Summit. But before he gives us that preview, what I actually want to do is also give you an opportunity to get to know Jacob if you guys don't already know him. I know many of you in my audience are familiar with him. For those who don't know who Jacob is, the reason I decided to bring him on as a guest for my upcoming summit is because he has had a tremendous impact on my own journey, on my own business. I've known him since 2018, back when I got started in the info marketing space with affiliate marketing originally. And I think he started probably about a year or so before me, um, back in like 2017 or so, if I'm correct. Yep. Yeah. Early 17, man. Yeah. Early 2017. So I remember back then he was, um, he, he uh, you know, he, he got his claim to fame with many of the people in the click funnel space when he won the dream car award. But at that time you weren't building your public brand or anything yet because you're actually working a corporate job. Uh, and he, he just wasn't allowed to build that corporate, that, that public brand at the same time. So he has a very, very interesting story. It's very different than a lot of the people in our space. Um, since then he went from, you know, building a blog, hitting the ground with his um you know affiliate marketing business to branching out well beyond that and now he's built this massive info marketing business consulting business um made multiple millions online over the past couple of years has obviously left the corporate career to focus on what he's doing full time and has helped many of his students hit six figures and even multi six figures and I'm sure we'll hear about some of that in his story so before we jump into it I want to see who, who's here with us. I see some of you already commenting. We're going live. We should be live inside of my group. And I believe on my profile too. This is the first time streaming on my profile from StreamYard in a very long time. So we'll see if it worked out. Uh, but for those of you who are tuning in, if you're watching us live, I want you to drop a hashtag live in the comments. If you are watching this on the replay, you could drop a hashtag replay. I see Jeremy Stubson just commented, Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Yes, sir. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I like to call and, I, and I'll take credit for giving him this nickname. I don't know whether he likes the nickname or not. He might hate it. But I like to call Jacob the, the kangaroo of the high ticket space because he's he's an Aussie. And I'll say like that. that. I'll say that. <laughs> so. Uh, so, yeah. So, you know, without further ado, while I'm waiting for those comments to come in, you guys can let me know if you're tuning in. Uh, make sure to smash the heart reaction also so that others can see this. It can show up on their news feeds. And let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, I'm in Toronto, Ontario. Jacob's all the way on the other side of the world. We're literally, I mean, it's 7 p.m. for me. I think it's 7 a.m. for him, if I'm not mistaken. 9 a.m. Yeah. Not, 9 a, a little bit later. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So not quite as early as I thought it was for you. Yeah, no, um, But cool. All right. So in the meantime, let, let's jump into your story, man. Give us a little bit of an overview of how you got started in entrepreneurship in general, how you got started into the info marketing space back in 2017 and where things have gone since then. For sure, dude. For sure, dude. I appreciate you having me on and folks, good to uh, good to connect with you all. I can see some of the names coming through. Some of you I know, some of you I don't. And hopefully I'll know all of you by the end of this live, if not the end of the, the summit with um, with Zeki. So I... Uh, my, my online journey kind of goes all the way back to 2011, but it was a brief stint. I, I got into the corporate world and was kind of like, ooh, this, this is interesting. I don't know if this is the path forever. Um, and so I bought a website off Flipper in like 2011 and it did it made, made me like 20 grand. And then um, the field that I went into was, was distressed corporate. And that was like a couple of years after the financial collapse in 2008. And it took a while to filter down to Australia. And so... Um, it was just hectic. Like I was kind of thrown into the fire. And so I, I had a little bit of breathing room when I started and then, and then pretty quickly the corporate game took over and um, was sucked into the matrix. Um, and so I did that for uh, until about 20, uh, 2015 in Australia. And then an opportunity came up to move over to New York um, for a couple of years. So I did that and that, you know, was amazing in terms of the exposure that I got to, to massive businesses and, um, like the minimum client that they would take on was 600 million a year. So it's like insanely big business. And uh, it was in my second year over there in 2017 that I was, I was looking at 
coming back in 2018 and I'm like, oh, you know, going from doing that there to, to back in Australia is like going from, you know, playing in the major leagues to playing baseball in the park. Um, and so I was like, I need to do something, I need to do something different. And uh, I started buying some kind of books again and bought Launch by Jeff Walker and a Tony Robbins book. And then that somehow wound up with me ending up in one of Russell's marketing audiences on Facebook and uh got hit with his his affiliate marketing stuff for click funnels and and I was down the rabbit hole and uh started out started out blogging as you mentioned in in 2017 and, and early 2018 because because of the corporate job and because of the, the high profile companies we were working with I couldn't have a I could be on social media in a personal capacity but I couldn't be representing another business or, or mm-hmm. be seen to be doing business in any other way. Um, and so I had to do it kind of behind the scenes and couldn't put my name to anything. And it was all a bit like secretive. And so I just kind of made do with what, with what I could at the time and, and started out doing a bit of blogging with the ClickFunnels stuff and a couple of other products and didn't really have a clue what I was doing, um, but just kind of bumbling around and writing blog posts on trains and planes and subways and, you know, whenever I got the opportunity to try and get some momentum because I didn't want to come back to Australia in 18 and, have to start from scratch. So it was, it was whatever I could really do at the time. And then I got back here and uh, took six months off unpaid leave. And I was like, I'll give it a crack. You know, like if, if it's, it's kind of now or never. Uh, and so went, went pretty hard and um, things started to take off, got the affiliate business up to kind of eight, nine, 10 a month. Um, I'm a little bit risk adverse at times. And so I actually decided to go back to work for three months, mm-hmm. um, which was, good and bad it was good in that it confirmed for me that i didn't want to do it anymore um it was bad in that trying to juggle a growing affiliate business and the brand i'd started at that point with the facebook group and running ads and i was literally operating on like four hours sleep a night for months on end and i got really really sick uh and basically had to decide in about september of 2018 like one or the other and so i was like you know give it a go and pulled the pin on the job and went all in on the business. And it's been kind of, you know, what is that? Four years now um, since, since that all happened. And uh, I've just aimed to kind of keep compounding the results one into another. Um, Dream car kind of unlocked some opportunities in the high ticket affiliate marketing space, did a couple of things there before rolling out my own program in that industry in late 2019, that, that took off. We presented people with a new opportunity to do affiliate marketing in a, in a different way. Um, that was my kind of first entry into really creating my own products in a big way. And uh, that gave me the bug of, well, it's pretty cool that you can, you know, I sat down and, and cranked out the first version of the SAA course over about eight weeks with a beta group of 40 people. And, and that version of it made, you know, 1.1, $1.2 million dollars. Uh, with with being able to capture what's in your head and turn it into a course, yeah. um, and so that really gave me the info marketing bug. And, and around January last year, twenty twenty one, I kind of branched the brand out a little bit wider to to help folks doing that because we figured out some pretty cool stuff in that in that period of time, and um, wanted to be able to work with people who you know, had the appetite to do that as well. And, and that's been kind of the focus over the last still work with the affiliates, that program's still running it, but it's gone from being the entire business to one arm of the business. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's all aspects of selling digital products and, and services via, via a personal brand in particular and building up the, you know, the, the ecosystem around the name, which is particularly relevant to what we're going to you know, talk about in the summit. For sure, man. For sure. And I think um, so. So you just touched on now, now your brand and, and everything you do really is focused on, uh, mm-hmm. you know, helping people build that personal brand, capitalize it. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I know, you know, you obviously you came from the affiliate space originally. And a lot of people, when they get into the affiliate space, they're not thinking on this. Uh, they're not thinking from like this wider perspective of just building the personal brand and and what you can do with that and what that can actually turn into so what i would be interested in hearing i mean obviously i'm in your inner circle i've heard you talk about this a lot but for the benefit of everybody who's tuning in we got like 20 people live with us right now so shout out to everyone who's tuning in make sure to leave a comment by the way if you're tuning in um live or on the replay hit the heart reaction as well so more people can see this um but what i for for everyone's benefit 
I would love if you can share, you know, some of the what has changed for you in terms of your perspective, because now it's been a couple of years. You've you've made a, changes in your focus and where your brand, your own brand has, has taken you. And and I'd love to hear how that's changed from when you started in affiliate marketing to how you view things now. Yeah, no, it's a really, really good question. So I think the misconception people have is that you need all of these, you know, big results or big achievements in order to start building a, a quote unquote personal brand. And that's just not not the reality. Like when I first started mine, um, which was, again, I was still working, so I couldn't be fully public. But what I decided to do was start a group where I could kind of sit behind the scenes and be a little bit more, you know, protected. So to speak, it was a bit risky, but it was kind of worth it for me at that point. Um, and when I started the group and just started talking about what I'd done in 2017, making, you know, a grand total of $15,000 blogging, like we, it wasn't sheep stations. It was just a little result that I'd achieved and, um, had learned a bit of stuff and started giving, you know, genuine value to people around it. And, and, you know, the beginner, the beginner's advantage, uh, in that game is if you can just give more than other people are giving, if you can give paid stuff for free, you will start to attract people. If you've just achieved something little, right? Like I tell the story of, um, I remember hitting up this guy in messenger when I wanted to start my group, because I saw he had a similar ish one and he had 400 people in it. And I remember thinking at the time, like, Holy shit, that's all the people in the world. Um, I was like, how did you do it? And he's like, Oh, well I posted and sent some DMs and I was like, okay, I can do that. Um, and so I, uh, so I started and, and it was all off the back of just a little bit of traction, um, blogging and you don't even need that little bit of traction. Like you can start purely from, Hey, this is me and I'm learning a bunch of cool shit and I'd like to share it with you along the way. I think people sometimes go into it either thinking they can't do that or two, they go into it with the wrong intention. There's no intention to provide genuine value there's no intention to prove to to try and build relationships and and network and it's like how can i copy and paste someone else's post and try and make a buck today um i think you've got people online who say they want to build a business but really they're just looking for a method of making money um and if you want to go deep in the branding game you've got to be firmly in that former group because it's a long-term commitment that you have to chip away at every day um, and so I always had kind of the bug to to do it because I saw these I saw these guys and girls out there in the market and I was like, it's insane what they can do, how much money they can make, the cool shit they get to experience simply off the back of building up credentials, um, results, helping other people, uh, expanding their network, creating products, just just by doing this stuff and and, and building a, an ecosystem around their name, they get to live this insanely cool life. So I saw that potential pretty early on, um, but it's through the, you know, living the experience of building it up that I've realized um, it's, it's the holy grail in as far as I'm concerned is if you show up every single day and chip away at making your name a little bit stronger, building your reputation a little bit more, um, having a few more people know you today than they did yesterday, Right. Um, helping out a few people to achieve a certain result, however big or small that may be, so that you pick up a few more, you know, really strong fans who will talk about you. Uh, you know, you make you make a few more offers, right? Because there is a, there is a part of relationship building where a transaction becomes very very helpful, um, and you just keep chipping away at that every single day. It's like the least sexy advice in the world, but you'll wake up four years down the line as I'm sitting here with you today and you won't believe, I, I said to Zeki before we jumped on, it was, it was six o'clock this morning. I have a mastermind call on a Friday morning and I was sitting out um, looking at the beach and taking this call and sipping on my coffee and just hanging out with people who are making, you know, millions online and talking about scheming and strategies to make money. I'm like, how? I try not to swear too much on lives and other people's groups. How good is this? Like, this is so cool. Um, and it's all because of that long-term mentality of like, I can just make my name a little bit stronger and a little bit bigger and a little bit better every day. Um, and there's obviously a lot of strategy to, to doing that. Um, but it's a tr I, think it's a, I think it's a mindset and I think it's a perspective that 
for the folks that can adopt it, they'll do really, 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 really uh, well. Um, mm. There's not some end point. It's a journey of growing the brand and it can be really enjoyable when you um, attack it in the right way, when you don't take yourself too seriously, when you you know have a genuine care for, for other people. Um, the way I think about a brand is it's the collective of the relationships that you've built in the market because it's how you, people think about you. Your brand is what it, brand is what people think about you when they hear your name, right? And what they think about you is going to be driven based on their relationship with you, however short or long that has been, right? And so what we talk about so much, and, and Zeki's heard me rattle on about this, is building relationships at scale through your content, through your team having conversations, through you having conversations. And if you build those relationships at scale, your brand will consistently get stronger and when you pair that with a good um, offer creation and monetization strategy, it, it's it's the that's the game to play as far as I'm concerned. For sure, for sure. And and I think uh, something that's connected with what you were just talking about because you talked about like having that long term perspective and just chipping away at it, chipping away at it. Um, one of the things that we had discussions about in in the inner circle, and I, maybe some others who are in Jacob's inner circle might be tuning in with us. I don't know, uh, but this has been huge for me in terms of perspective is just talking about having that long-term view. And I know people always say have a long-term view and, you know, uh, look at where things are going to be. And, and they just, they treat it as just kind of cliche advice. But when you really understand that it, it, it manifests itself in so many different ways in your business, right? Yeah. Here we're talking about how it shows up in looking at building your brand. But even when I think about, for example, with what you just mentioned relationships, when you jump into a sales convo with somebody and it doesn't, they don't close right away. And some people will just, I saw someone, I was, I was browsing Facebook recently and I saw a guy posted, he's doing a lot of DMS, um, just trying to like close sales, reaching out to as many people kind of playing the numbers game. Mm. And he mentioned that when people don't buy from him, he blocks them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bro, so you're expecting everybody that you jump into a conversation with to, to buy from you now and today, and you haven't even built any type of relationship with them. You haven't built a notable brand or anything. And, and you're, so just, stupid. you're just burning that boat because they didn't buy from you now. It just shows the kind of short-term thinking people actually yeah. have. Even yeah. when they think that they're thinking with a long-term, people really – I feel like most people, 99% of folks in our space, actually when you observe how they operate – it's on a short, short term. Oh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. And this is the ultimate hack guys. You will destroy, absolutely destroy anybody by just thinking a couple of steps ahead and a couple of years out instead of to the end of your nose, you will crush them. SAA we were talking about before has been around for three years this month or next month the amount of copycats that have come and gone in that time. And we're still showing up every single week. Course is still selling, right? Still getting awesome results. We just haven't stopped, right? But they're like, oh, I did my beta and, you know, I got a few people and now I'm going to go on to the next thing. It's just, it's absolutely, absolutely insane. The compound effect over time of a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And taking congruent action such that, okay, what, how, what got me to here, right? If I want to add something new, right, it's not about going off in it. Like I just started posting on Twitter. That's not about me going and building a whole new product and a whole new funnel and, and, and using Twitter in a, in, a, in a whole different way. It's like I've got this entire ecosystem. Well, I can just add to it. I'll spend half an hour a day and it will fuel the ecosystem. So, so thinking congruently where things just start to, stack on top of each other more and more and more with, with the case of the idiot that you're talking about. Like you, you, if you block people, you're, you're, you're harming yourself. You're not harming them, right? You're doing them a favor. <laughs> you, you're harming yourself because if you, if you send out 20 messages today, right. And, and let's assume that probably all 20 of them don't buy today. Then tomorrow you send out another 20 now you've got 40 people in your pipeline. If you block the first 20, every day you're at 20. The person that doesn't burn those bridges in a month is at 600. The other person is still at 20. 
give it another month, give it another month, give it another month. We're at 600, we're at 1200, we're at 1800. Who do you think is going to have sales coming in daily? The person who's got 1800 people in their pipeline or the person who's still got 20 because their ego was dented because someone didn't buy from them immediately. It's nuts. It makes, it makes no sense. This pipeline concept and, and what people say is like, oh, you don't buy, you're not committed. You're not, you're not committed if you don't pay me today. It's like, sorry, who are you? Who, yep. You don't know what I've got going on in my life, right? Timing is the most underrated aspect of making money online. You, you have no clue what people are going through. No clue. So present them the opportunity. And if they don't want it now, let them drop back into your world. Keep showing up, which is where the consistency element comes into it. And make a compelling case over the coming weeks, months, and fuck it, years, eventually they'll drop in. That's that's how I view the world anyway. And and I get I clearly get animated about it. I get frustrated with like, it. Just, <laughs> it fucking doesn't click for people. It's like you you are making life so hard for yourself. Um by by not just extending the horizon slightly. It, it not, I'm not I'm not even saying like go because that's asking too much but just a little bit just push it out a little bit and you'll be okay 100 percent, man i mean i'll give a perfect example right now i was in jacob's audience from way back in 2018 so when i got into affiliate marketing there were a couple facebook groups that i joined yours was one of them there was a few other facebook groups that i joined that were in the affiliate marketing space so all the way back if you look at some of jacob's oldest videos and lives you'll see it says Zeki Ahmed liked it because I was I, I I was following him way back then when he was he I remember you doing the little whiteboard I don't know if it was in yeah, the office or where it was that was but, my apartment yeah yeah there we go so so I was in his audience from way back in 2018 I jumped into uh, Jacob did a bunch of stuff he launched SAA I hadn't jumped into that or anything um, I was still like following what he's doing I eventually jumped into his inner circle in 2021 so that's how many years later we're talking about we're talking about like three, four years later, yeah. I jumped into his inner circle, which was a five figure investment. Uh, so now right off the bat, he made five figures off of me just off of that one sale. I had purchased other things from him too. Um, and then I renewed again this year. So all that time that I was following Jacob, imagine if Jacob just like burned the bridge with me at some point because I hadn't joined, let's say SAA or something like that. It's not, it's, it's actually insane. I, I've, it, I mean, you've seen the training. I have this for the folks watching. I have this training inside Inner Circle called $400,000 Power Hours. And it's a slightly exaggerated example, but it's also very, very true. It shows how if you put out a Facebook post or an email or, or whatever, right? And it generates, you say, five leads, right? Some people may be happy with that. Some people may not be, whatever. And it lands you a $1,000 sale today. Most people think about that post as, oh, it made me a $1,000. But when you embrace this thinking that we're talking about here and you just look at the world and go, I'll just beat everybody with consistency. I'll just beat everybody with longevity. And it's not about being adversarial. It's just about going, well, I'll just outlive you, right? Like I'll make such a compelling case that you will buy from me eventually, right? If I want you to buy from me um, by by being consistent. Anyway, this, this training talks about how that thousand bucks right? Great. Amazing. But it's like the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg, right? The tip of the iceberg. Um, You can roll forward, you know, three months. And if you've got good stuff, they might buy a second thing. Maybe it's for, who cares? Maybe it's for 200 bucks, right? Now your customer value is at 1200. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, who knows? Six months could go by, nine months could go by and, and you don't, you don't do anything together. And then they see you put up a post about, you know, a, a coaching program that you're running right? For six grand. And then they jump into that. And then you work on, you know, let's say that's a 90 day program. You do that together. Now you're at 7,200. And then you roll out a, you know, like an inner circle, you know, cult builders elite 12 month type deal ongoing. Um, and let's say that's, you know, 20 grand. And then they jump and then they jump into that, right? Now that Facebook post, that seed that you planted didn't just get you five leads. It didn't just make you a grand. It's made you like, 25, 30 grand. And that's still the tip of the iceberg. And when you keep extending your horizon, 
right? Like I've got, I've got folks, you know, Zeki's in his second year working with me. I've got guys that are in their fourth year working with me as we roll into the new calendar year. Um, you know what happens in those four years is not only the direct LTV compounds and grows, right? Another year, another year, another year, but they talk about you because they clearly like working with you because they're hanging around. And let's say they just recommend one person come and check out your Facebook group. And that one person spends the thousand dollars because they see a similar-ish post. And then they go on a path and then they recommend another. That one original post very quickly can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars indirectly and directly. Um, that's how we look at the world. Exactly. And I, I and and you can you guys can see like that's just one example, but this is why I feel like again I feel like it's taken as such cliche advice when we tell people to think long term, but when you actually think about it and when you actually see the effects of it, yeah. it changes the whole game for you. And I don't know who said this. There's the famous quote. I think it's from Dan Kennedy of whoever can outspend the competition yeah, will, will win. Kennedy. But it's not just whoever can outspend the competition. It's also whoever can outweight. The competition yeah. and i heard someone else say the same thing but basically two things if you can spend more money to acquire a customer and if you can wait longer if, if, if you can have more patience the person who is cool with nurturing a new lead for a year before they convert is going to get way further than someone who has to convert within five days and when you really realize that then and and change your perspective with how you're approaching this game it's gonna it's gonna change everything for you really yeah We'll give folks a little bit of a, a little, a little, not a hack, but a little tip, a little actionable tip. I can't tell you guys how much money this has made me at this point is if, as you're building up your audience, as you, let's say you run a group, you're doing lives, you're creating content, you're whatever, right? If you take a little bit of time each day and don't expect, you know, Lambos and booths in the first week, if you take a little bit of time each day, to say thank you to the people that come to your lives, to the people that comment on your stuff, to the people who like your stuff, to the people who request to join your groups. If you just take a little bit of time with with no ill intention or no, like I, this has to convert today because it stinks, people can smell it, um, you will build up a pipeline mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Two people a day is 60 people in a month, right? That's 60 people you didn't have in your pipeline a month ago. Five people a day, month, 150 people in your pipeline. And I'm not saying you sit in Messenger and talk to these people all day, but you plant seeds, right? You plant seeds and you plant seeds and you plant seeds. And that done over a month, two months, three months, and you keep showing up and showing up and showing up. And when the opportunity presents, you you actually go in and make the offer. You can't be afraid to do that. We're not talking about that. You will have such a fat pipeline in six months. That's where can, people go, I want consistent sales. Consistent sales come from the depth of your pipeline. You have to, the actions you do today are what's going to give you the consistent sales in three months, not the actions that you do in three months. And this timeline for people, I think is getting longer. Right, a little bit of uncertainty in the economy. A lot of other people they can buy from, and few people have something that's truly, truly unique. So you're not dealing in a market of one. I think this timeline is starting to nudge out, right? And so rather being rather than being a business that is dependent on instant conversions, my view is well, I'm going to engineer a business that actually supports that. I want people to spend more time consuming. I want that time horizon to get longer because then when they eventually reach out, they're going to be more educated about what we do and the sale becomes way, way, way easier. So I'm building those relationships at scale through audio, through video, through lives, through short form written, through long form written, right? And it doesn't mean you spend all day creating content. There's, there's a lot of leverage you can integrate. Um, but I want them to hang out for months because then when the time comes, it's, it's an easy transaction. Yeah. I mean, I'll, t I'll tell you guys right now, by the way, when I joined Jacob's inner circle, it was it was a DM. He just shot me a message. He said, hey, Zeki, I'm opening up this inner circle. I think it'll be a good fit for you. Um, are you interested? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Actually, I was thinking about reaching out to you. So shoot me the info. He sent me a Google Doc. I don't remember how long it was. It might have actually been two pages. 
And we're talking about a five figure investment here. We're not talking about like buying a hundred dollar thing. He sent me like a two page Google doc. I read, I read it and I told him I'm down, shoot me the link to, to pay. I paid him and it, it was a done deal. And I know I'm not the only person who signed up into his inner circle that way. Um, and that was because, like I said, I had been in his audience. I had been engaging with his stuff, already had some level of a relationship, um, even just through the content that I've been consuming. So when it came, came time where he had an offer to put in front of me, it was a very, very easy process. It wasn't like, you know, it, it wasn't like he had to have an appointment set or reach out to me, put me through a whole process, get me on the phone, go through all this, a two page Google doc, five figure investment done. Yeah. And, and, and the rule, the rule at play there folks is the stronger the relationship, the earlier, the, the easier the sale will become. Right. And if you think about outside of business, your strong relationships are with people that you've been through shit with. You've experienced fun stuff. You might've experienced bad stuff. Like you've, you've had experiences together over, over a period of time. Um, and so you engineer that in your business. They see you high, they see you low, they, you know, they, your audience rides the waves with you. But the stronger that relationship becomes, the easier and easier the selling um, will become. And it's what happens before the sales process, before the offer that dictates the success of the sales, as far as I'm concerned. It's not the tool right? Like we've done 30K plus deals with no doc. Mm -hmm. And it's not the messenger script. It's not the doc. It's not even that good of an offer. It's just the relationship that's been established. And the cool thing about the internet is that you have so much leverage to build relationships at scale with volume that you don't have to do it one-to-one -one. you can supplement it with one-to-one -one, or you can bring people on to help you supplement it with one-to-one -one. i just saw scott oldford put out a post um saying he wants to hire a full-time person to get in touch with people from his audience not a setter not a closer right just to manage relationships right and that's that's what we already do right myself and and a couple of other people that help me out is that they don't get in touch to set for a call they don't even get in touch to pitch a product it's getting in touch to take that relationship to a slightly more intimate one-to-one -one level um, for people who are clearly active, clearly engaging, and clearly interested. Um, and I think that's where the market's heading more and more, the way I see it. And, and that's the way I like to do business anyway. You send an invitation, they say yes or no. The frame of thinking here is Zeki and I, let's say Zeki and I had something we wanted to sell right now. Zeki and I are going to dinner, right, at you know, whatever restaurant you like, you know, um, we've got these other cool people are coming along. It's happening whether you like it or not, right? Jeremy, Beverly, Kelly, Jennifer, I'm just listing the names I can see. We're going to this dinner and it's happening whether you like it or not. Would you like to come along with us, right? And you're not saying this in an arrogant way. It's just the stance. It's happening do you want to come? If not, cool. We're still going to go and have a good time. We'd love it if you joined us. The more, the merrier. But if not, that's totally cool too, right? And if now's, the, if, now, if now's timing isn't right, we're doing it again in a quarter. Maybe we can circle back then. Sweet. That's how we sell. It's kind of, it's kind of more of inviting even. It's an invitation, yeah. Then selling. I just bought the domain invitationselling.com. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. By the way, I see we got um, we got a lot of people here. So what I want to do is, first off, if you haven't already commented to let me know that you're here, drop a hashtag live if you're watching live, hashtag replay if you're watching on the replay. Smash the heart reaction so that others can see this content too. Um, wh what I would like to do, I'm going to ask in a second for Jacob to give us a little bit of a teaser into what he's planning to cover on the summit. But if you guys have been tuning in and you have any questions vibing off of what we've been talking about so far, feel free to drop it. I'd love to make this more interactive. Um, we, I don't know if Jacob is pressed for time right now. We've been on for about half an no, hour. I'm good. Okay, cool. So we'll I'll talk so, about this shit all day. Cool. So we'll chill around for around another half hour. Or so it's getting yep. a little bit late on my side. Um, but 
but I'd love to have, you know, some interaction. So if you guys have questions, things you want to take advantage of right now that we have Jacob live here, feel free to drop them in the, in the comments below and we'll get to whatever we can get to in the time that we have here. In the meantime, um, so your topic for the summit is called building the legend of you. Yep. Can you tell us more about without giving it all away? Can you tell yep. us more about what you plan to cover, what people will get out of attending your session? Definitely. So when I, when I've spoken about this topic in the past, there's a, there's kind of a, you know, uh, assumed knowledge or, or, or a few things are assumed that people have in place. That's not to say that if you don't have those things, it's not going to be of value to to you. It's just that once you do have those things in place, it becomes even more valuable. Okay. So I'll, I'll set these parameters. And then if you don't have them yet, don't stress, go and get them. Um, but if you do, this will be, even more valuable because you can deploy them more aggressively, like starting now. Okay. Um, so the, the scenario is you've got a thing you want to sell, right? Your main thing. So for me, it's in a circle. I think for Zeki, it's his cult builders elite. That's where he's ultimately trying to find his, his best people, right? Like at the top of his business, you know, he does other things, but it's all congruent and feeds that whether people see that publicly or not. Right. Um, so you've got your you've got your main thing that you want to sell. It could be your own, could be an affiliate product, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, and I recommend, where possible, focusing on on having one main thing. Um, and if you are going to kind of deviate off in other directions, make sure there's some kind of connection to to ultimately bring it back, so that you again are getting that compounding effect of, well, I made this other little sale over here, or did this other little thing, but I can see how it can feed the main thing. So you've got your we call it a signature offer whatever it is for you, right? Um, you've got a way to sell it, right? So you, you've selected at least or are already practicing in a set sales process, right? We use docs. Zeki's rolling with docs. Um, you could do a doc on the front end into a, into a quick call on the back end. We call them seal the deal calls where they're more informed about the purchase. And then um, it's just a, a quick chat to, you know, Make sure they're not a weirdo and and and, and get the deal done. Um, or you could do the you know more traditional strategy session model, right? Wh whatever works for you. You've got a sales process, or, or it could be just a sales page, you know, with an order form directly. Um, you need you need clarity on that, and I'd recommend that you pick one main one so that you because you, you want to think about moving people through your world and having a clear next step. And if your sales process fractures off in like 50 different directions and you could, Oh, we, we could do a strategy session or we could do a discovery call or we could do a, I've got this VSL and then you can book a call after it, or you can, you know, book a call. Then I'll send you this thing. It's like, just, just pick one. They all work. They're just, they're just tools. Right. Like if I wanted to try break the window, I could throw any one of things in this office at it. They're just tools to achieve an outcome. Right. So just pick the one that you like the best and roll with that. It will give you a lot of clarity when you focus your sales process down to one thing. Um, once you've got these things in place, life becomes pretty simple. It's about flow and it's about awareness. It's about getting more attention, right? So that you can push more people to the sales process so more people can see the offer at the end of the sales process. That's, that's kind of the game. Um, and so the way we look at this is you've got those things in place and you're, you're leveraging your personal brand in order to sell. You've got one main thing left to do, and that is to build your legend in the market, right? Um, and the bigger you make that, and when I say legend, I mean your stories, what you've achieved, who you've helped, what you're doing at the moment, your predictions, your views of where everything's going, what you failed at, even, um, you know, everybody loves a um, everybody loves a comeback story, right? Like the all of those elements come together to make you and your brand. And so, your goal once you've got those things in place is to spread the word in the right places as aggressively as you can. More attention is going to lead to more consumption of your stuff right? The more that people consume, the more time they spend with you, the stronger the relationship becomes, right? Because we spoke about before the, the best relationships we have or the, or the strongest relationships we have are with people who have been through stuff with us. Mm -hmm. That happens through consumption, 
online through the stories that they read of ours, through the things they see us do, through you know the, the stuff that we share, all that kind of stuff. The relationships lead to fans and raving fans, right? People will be at a certain point in terms of how much affinity they have for you and your brand. And the stronger that fan base becomes, the stronger the relationships become, the easier the sales will become. Okay, so I've got my offer here. Now I've just got one thing to do. Spread the word about the brand, right? Build the story, build the legend, right? And we do this to achieve three things. One, more eyeballs, generate awareness. Two, build your reputation. That's what people know about you, right? So the first one's how many people know about you, width. The second one's depth, what they know about you and how much they know about you. And the third one is to pre-sell your stuff your signature offer or any of your sub offers. And that's where you get into talking about your views and your methodologies. Like I've been talking about, right? This is a, there's an element of pre-selling in this for the summit. You know, if any of you guys come check out my stuff, you're in tune with how we see the world. So it's not going to be a surprise when you consume any future of my stuff of my, any of my stuff in the future, because it's congruent. So we pre-sell. And the more you do that and the more people that see it and the bigger and bigger that becomes, the more consistently deals will drop. The bigger the deals get because price elasticity will go through the roof because of the affinity that they have with your brand. The more people will refer because you'll have more people talking about you and that whole flywheel just spin, spins bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's all based off spreading the word about you, what you've done, who you've helped, what you're doing, why you're different, your views, your values, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to be jamming on. The strategies in order to do that and the tactics to a degree. Cool. Awesome. So by the way, I, I see a lot of you are still here. Let, let me know. Let me know if you're excited for Jacob's session. I know I'm really excited. I've had the opportunity to hear a lot of this already, um, his thoughts on this topic from just being part of the inner circle. We had a discussion a while back um, on this very topic. And this the reason that I asked him, I messaged him after we had our live session talking about it. And I, and I told him I'd love for him to cover it on the, on the summit too, because a lot of the things that, that we talked about, I feel like are things that are not discussed in most circles in our space, at least. So it's going to be very, very exciting. I see a lot of you already commenting how excited you are. So what I don't see in the comments right now are any questions or anything that people wanted to, yeah. um, wanted Far to chat away. about. So you guys have the opportunity. Look, we're, we're live right now with you. This is not a recorded video. We're live with you here. So this is your opportunity to take advantage of it. If there's anything, you know, off of what we talked about so far or anything you want to vibe on a little chat about, drop it in the comments right now. Let's take advantage because if there are no questions, if there's nothing that you guys want to chat about, then I will be wrapping the session up. So it's in your best interest to try to keep us here here longer with some questions. In the meantime, um, while, while I'm waiting for those comments to come in, I do want to give you guys a heads up. I put a link in the caption of this video. If you're not already registered for the summit, it only takes you a couple seconds. I strongly recommend that you go grab your free ticket. The summit is going to take place in this group. If you don't reserve your ticket though, you're not going to be able to get updates on the session timings, uh, you know, topics that, that are coming out and all that type of stuff. So make sure to go grab your ticket. The link is in the description. It's zeki.co slash summit. It'll literally take you like five seconds. Now, when you do sign up, the summit is free to attend. It's starting on November 14th till the 18th, five days. We got 16 different speakers, kick-ass lineup. Uh, you know, our speakers have a combined following they've built of 3.2 million plus fans. They've made hundreds of millions of dollars in sales generated uh, between all, all of them. So they're going to be teaching you. Each of them are going to be covering an area of their expertise. I strongly recommend you guys attend. This is not going to be like those webinars where you just hear people's stories and then they try to pitch you on something. This is actual legitimate training. They're all preparing real training to teach you guys something from their area of expertise to help you move the needle forward in building your own passionate cult following and more importantly, monetizing it and using it to fuel your business. Now, with that said, while the event is free, you will have the opportunity as soon as you sign up to purchase a VIP upgrade, which is going to give you lifetime access to all of the recordings from the event so that you don't have to miss any of the sessions. Cause that is, I mean, we're looking at 16 speakers over the course of five days. That's like 15, 16 plus hours of content. I don't know if you guys want to take a part-time job out to watch the summit material, 
but we all got lives. So it's a good idea to snag the recordings. You can catch all the sessions on whatever time is best for you, plus a bunch of additional bonuses. But the reason I wanted to plug it in here is because right now the VIP pass is only $75 and that's only for the next couple of days. The price is going up on November 2nd, which I think is five days from now, if I'm correct. So I would recommend if you haven't upgraded to the VIP pass already to do it today because it's very easy. If you don't do it today, it's very easy for you to forget to do it before the deadline actually comes and then you end up having to pay more for it. So that'll take you not very long. You just go sign up for your free ticket. You'll see the offer there. You can upgrade to the VIP pass and then you'll get access to all of that. There's also an affiliate opportunity. I'm not going to go through all the details here, but basically you can make 40% commissions promoting the event for free. Or if you upgrade it to the VIP pass, 80% commissions on whatever, whatever you get, but you can get all those details on the website when you go sign up. So with that said, I think I see some questions that yeah, there's a few dropping through. So let's see what we got here. I'll try and pull some up here on the screen so we can see. So the first, first one I can see was, uh, what if you are new and don't have a signature offer yet? Do you um, see who asked that? Oh, here we go. Uh, no, it just says Facebook user on my end. I'm not okay, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, not sure who that is. But um, I mean, there's no shortage of, of stuff to sell out there, right? There's a lot of crap, but if you can find something that's good, you can, you know, build your business around that. Either you can either create it yourself. But it depends on, I don't know who's asking the question. So it depends if you're, want to go the affiliate path or you want to create your own stuff and that's going to be driven based on your own experience and skills and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So you could, you know, you, you could start out just your signature offer could be a one-to-one -one call. Like when I first did my toe in the op making my own offers, it was $197 for an hour um, to talk about the stuff I'd done in affiliate marketing. All right, that was like my first you know, own offer. Uh, so, you know, you can either, Keep it really simple like that. You can have a Calendly link with a little checkout form, whatever you're happy to charge per hour to help people with a certain topic. That could be where you start, right? Then eventually you productize it and you take it from there. Um, or if you don't want to, you know, do delivery on, on, on products, go out and find an affiliate offer that you like the look of or that you resonate with or, or that is run by somebody that you resonate with. And um, you can start building up your name in, in a given niche or in the internet marketing game uh, and and recommend that until such a time that you want to create your own things. For sure. Uh, one thing I want to mention, by the way, for any of you who are new and you don't already have an offer, what Jacob just mentioned, personally, I'm a little bit biased because I got my start in affiliate marketing, but I will say, I think for most people who are starting out online, if you don't already have an offer and you're looking for something to sell, Choosing something to promote as affiliate is a very, very smart route because what you're able to do is you can piggyback off of the track record and efforts that someone else already put. They already put together an offer for you. If you're choosing an offer that has a track record, like they've already got something that's converting, they already got tons of material, testimonials, all that type of stuff. They're obviously, you know, some people come into the game with some kind of prior experience that they can leverage for creating their own thing. But I think for most people, and Jacob, you can tell me if you agree or disagree with this, but I think for most people who are starting from scra absolute scratch and don't know what they can promote, I would personally say it's a smart idea to look for something that already has a track record in the market that's already out there getting results that you can tag onto as an affiliate because that will allow you to build your brand. It allows you to build your audience. You can just focus on the marketing. And then it's always later down the line, you can always, um, you can always branch out from there and then start launching your own things. Yeah. I think in particular, if you want to go into the internet marketing space, that's a really good way to go. If you want to go into other niches, it's probably a coin toss in terms of it, it really depends on the individual. Um, but if, if the internet marketing space is, is what tickles your fancy, then yeah, I would highly recommend starting as an, as an affiliate. For sure. Cool. So I see we got another question here for me. Um, someone's asking, is there a time of day for the summit? So the way the summit's going to work, again, it's we're going live from November 14th to the 18th. If you haven't reserved your ticket, Link is above. Each day of the summit, we're going to have different sessions. So those sessions are going to be scheduled. They're going to go live here in the group at specific times. As we get closer to the event, I will be sending that schedule out to everybody who registered. Some of the session timings I'm still finalizing with some of the speakers. Uh, but once we have it, all the sessions completely finalized, 
I will be sending that schedule out and they're going to go live at specific times during the day. Now, each day, what's going to happen is let's say, for example, day one, we have a session that's going live at 1 p.m. And then we got another session at 3 p.m. and, and, and another at six as examples. What's going to happen is those sessions that went live on day one will stay up in the group here until the end of the day, Eastern time zone. So until midnight, at that point, all of those live replays are going to be taken down. Then day two, we're going to go live at the specific times that you're going to have a schedule for the different speakers. And then day three, day four, same thing. Now, if you got the VIP pass upgrade, you will get access to a private members area where you can log in after the event is over and you're going to be able to catch all the sessions. So you're going to have all the replays. You're going to have tons of bonuses on top of the replays, you know, quick review summary sheets for each of the sessions, transcripts, um, even audio downloads so you can listen on the go and stuff like that. So that's for those of you who upgrade to the VIP. If you're just tuning into the live, then you want to make sure to tune in on the actual day of the speakers that you want to catch. And you will be able to catch the replay until that midnight when it goes Eastern time when, when it goes away. It, now to repeat again, the, for the specific timings that the speakers are going to go live, I will send that out by email. So just make sure that you reserve your free ticket so that you're on the list of people signed up and you can find the link for that above. So now I see another question here for Jacob from Jeremy. What's happening, Jeremy? Thanks for thanks for participating. So Jacob, so Jeremy said, Jacob, do you see any new platforms for promoting programs and information, i.e., the next TikTok, Meta, or whatever? Uh, I can't say I do, and, and probably I'm I'm not the right person to ask this question of because I move slowly. Like I'm not on TikTok. I don't use Instagram. I up until three weeks ago, basically. It was like YouTube and Facebook for me. Um, I've started adding Twitter and LinkedIn now uh, slowly, but there's so much opportunity on the current platforms um, that you, know, you can't even scratch the surface of it. Uh, so so to, to give you a frank answer, no, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I think it really depends. I think platform selection depends on a couple of things. One your strengths uh, to what you enjoy doing um, and three, your time horizon. So, and by time horizon, I mean, if you want the chance to get more traction quickly right now, short form video is probably the, the best way to do it. Um, maybe Twitter as well. If you follow a certain approach, uh, you're going to get width. You're not necessarily going to get depth. Mm -hmm. um, if you want depth in a longer term relationship building, I, I don't think you can go past um, YouTube or a group where you can kind of create longer term, longer form written content uh, and, and, and build a relationship with your um, community that way. So it really depends on goals, strengths, time horizon, um, all those kind of, uh, all those kind of things. For sure. Cool. All right. So we got another question from Kelly. She said, regarding your latest YouTube video, can you talk about repelling people that aren't action takers? Um, this is, oh man, we could talk about this for weeks. Um, keep in mind, you train people how you want to be treated. So if people are wasting your time, you're letting them waste your time. Right? People, A lot of, a lot of folks talk about you know, getting frustrated with people who, you know, uh, request free information and then and then don't buy, or you know, they spend a lot of time and then they and then they don't get they don't get paid. You're allowing that to happen, right? And some people don't like it when I tell them that. But you've got two options in this game: you either blame other people or you take responsibility. And even the shit that's out of your control, you have to take responsibility for because nobody else is going to. Right? If you bought a shitty course. You can sit there and blame the, the creator, but where's it going to get you? You should raise your hand and go, hmm, probably should have identified the red flags that I bought it off a coach who's had three minutes of experience. That's on me, right? So the best, I'm not having a dig at, at Kelly or anyone. I'm just saying the, the only way to deal with this is to take responsibility. So if people are wasting your time, you're letting them waste your time. Um, so you need to set, you know, set your own rules and boundaries, uh to to live by and the reality is early days you're gonna have to open up the bandwidth on that because you're just simply not gonna have enough volume right mm -hmm. like i've told this story a million times my first 
um, coaching offer before I started doing those uh, calls was you could get unlimited coaching if you just joined ClickFunnels. That's like $38 a month, right? Like I'd, I'd be better off doing anything else <laughs> in terms of a, in terms of a price. Um, so you're going to need to open up your bandwidth a little bit, um, a little bit more. The, and I think this is going to tie into a, another question that popped up. The more information you put on the front end mm -hmm. in terms of price, in terms of the fact that there's an investment. And when I say on the front end, I mean in your content and your marketing, the more you give people on the front end, the lower your volume will go, but the more qualified the volume that you do get will be. It's a general rule of thumb. People are like short form content versus long form content, right? I had this, oh, I had this lady for so long who like every two months, she'd go on a rant about SAA and how they write long form posts. Um, she clearly didn't understand this concept and made me a ton of money because we'd always get a little influx every couple of months. I'm like, oh, she must be posting about us again. And bitching and I'm like, Keep doing it, love. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you write longer form content, you won't get as much volume. You won't get as much interaction, but you've got more scope to give people detail, right? Yeah. And the more detail they have, the less weight you put on the sales process. So if you want to spend less time in Messenger, put more information out on the front end. That's going to reduce the number of people that come through. But you need to take the good with the bad and accept that your volume will go down. So it's a it's a bit of a balancing act um, in that way. Uh, an extreme way to do it is in the first message, go... Um, look, happy to give you information or happy to talk to you about it, but the investment is blank. You'll pretty rapidly scare people away. I don't necessarily suggest doing that, but it depends on the individual as well. Um, there's pros and cons to, and we may as well answer this question while we're, while we're here. Someone said, um, if we're an affiliate for a high ticket course, is it okay to make some content about the cost up front? I know so many people say they're frustrated. Yeah, it, it's totally, totally okay. Um, the in, in, with with my clients, we talk a lot about a concept called pre-selling, and and the more boxes that you tick before someone sees an offer, the easier it will be for them to say yes to the offer. Because if you think about a scenario where someone knows exactly who you help, exactly how you help them. Um, the case studies that you've got, they align with your personality, your sense of humor, your worldviews, and they know that it costs 10 grand to work with you. If they still message you, you're going to close at like 98%, right? Mm -hmm. The only people that aren't going to buy are that, you know, something happens and they can no longer afford it or, you know, they have a change of heart, or, but pretty unlikely, right? So the more information that they've got, again, on the front end, the easier the transaction becomes. But at the same time, the more information on the front end the less volume you're going to get because you're naturally qualifying your audience out. This is why so many people spend all day in the DMs booking calls and it's like, hey, can I help you with this vague, open-ended thing? It's like, yeah, you're going to get a shitload of volume. You've got no marketing on the front end, even though they call themselves marketers. You've got no marketing on the front end. You're having endless conversations and you'll get on the phone with anyone that'll give you a minute of time. And then you're trying to compress building the entire relationship down into 45 minutes, hiding the price until the last three seconds so that you can barrel them into purchasing. And then if they say no, they're not committed. Yeah. Right. It's all about opening and closing flow in terms of traffic. And that's driven based on how much, information you you put out there the other thing to think about is the longer that people have to think about a price if it's something that they actually want the more time they've got to sit on it the they'll start to justify it to themselves if you see i, I just bought a new car and I, I looked at it and i'm like that's cool probably don't want to spend that much money three days later i bought it because i found like 18 ways to justify it to myself because i drove it and i was like oh it's really nice and then you know we figure it out right Yeah, I think the key thing there too, because I was actually just going to mention that um, the key thing is like there has to really be the desire for it because in this scenario, like you really wanted the car, right? So if 
if you're actually doing the marketing part, which is an important point, what Jacob just said, if you caught it, is a lot of people who are spending a lot of time in the conversations in DMs, on phone calls or whatever, they're not really doing marketing on the front end. They're not putting a lot of content out there. They're not doing much to move people forward in that buyer's process and that buyer's journey psychologically, which means that now when you get into a sales conversation with somebody, whether it's in the DMs or it's on the or you know on the phone, you have to do all of this heavy lifting that you could have done in your marketing. If you were regularly putting content out there, let's say your content did like 50% of the work. And then now when you, when you get on the phone, you only have to do the other 50 to close somebody. If you weren't doing any marketing and you're trying to do all of the conversion in the sales process, that means that now, because you had no content, people don't know who the heck you are. They don't know anything about how you can help them. Your offer is very vague, but you were able to get them on the phone. Now you have to do 100% of the heavy lifting on the phone. And that's what Jacob's talking about when he's talking about these folks who are, you know, they do, they, they go hardcore on the actual selling in the convos. Whereas the flip side of an extreme of that is if we use that example, I mentioned before, when I joined Jacob's inner circle, where he didn't have to do any selling really in the DMS with me, because there was already such a relationship built. He had been putting content. I had been engaging with him now for years. So, and it doesn't have to be years, by the way, I'm just saying in my example, this doesn't have to happen over the course of years, but I had already engaged with him so much where it already took me to like 95% of the way of that purchase. All he had to do was put the offer in front of me and he didn't even have to do any kind of sales process or overcome objections or do anything yeah. like that. Yeah. And there's not, and, and this isn't saying one way is right and one way is wrong. It's just different, right? Like the breaking the window. You know, there's no right and wrong way to do it. They're just they're just different. I could throw my laptop, I could throw my desk. They're just different tools for the job. The reason that Zeki and I prefer to invest the time in the content and in improving the offer, um, the the thing that presents the offer, is I can spend 20 minutes tweaking up the offer, adding some new deliverables, changing up the copy. And then every single person that I send that offer to in the future is going to see those changes. So I'm capturing that 20 minutes and the next 300 people that see the offer, they get the benefit of that. I don't have to spend 20 minutes explaining it to each person individually, or I don't have to manage a team of people to explain it individually. So you got leverage. Same with the content. I can invest an hour, capture my energy, capture my time, repurpose it. It's harder because you can't immediately and directly address someone's objections like you can in a conversation. But over time, you build out such a web of assets that are generating you leads, educating your people, that that's how you detach your income from your time and your energy is by investing in building the assets to let them do the heavy lifting instead of you or you managing a team of people. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's see if we got, I, I, I see we got other questions. So we'll, 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 we'll get through these as well. Uh, let's see what this next question is. I can't see who's asking it, but they said as a new affiliate marketing, uh, as a new affiliate marketer, what is the one most important thing that you did to accelerate your success? So I feel like personally, I feel like this is a very general question that can, can go a lot of different ways. Uh, but, but I'll pose it to you, man. What's your, what would you say? For me or for somebody else, the thing that you did to accelerate your success. Um, I'll, I'll give you the answer based on me and then I'll give you a, maybe, I don't know. Let's see where this goes. Um, the biggest thing for my success in affiliate marketing and since has always been having one major thing that I'm focused on at any point in time. And so when I started, it was, I became, you know, borderline obsessed with winning the, the dream car. Took me 18 months. Russell told me in the ad it would take 100 days. Now, I don't begrudge Russell that. He's a marketer. Took a little bit longer than 100 days. Okay. And there's another lesson in that. Whenever I set these one big thing, and I'll give you a few more examples in a second. Whenever I set this one big thing, I don't put a timeline on it. Okay. Now you need a certain trust in yourself and you need a certain level of self-motivation um, to be able to do that because you need to have the confidence in yourself that it's 
not a matter of if, but a matter of when. And when you have that that self-belief and that grows, the more you make a commitment to yourself that you're going to do something and you see it through. That self-confidence will grow. That self-trust will grow. Um, but I pick this big thing and I don't put a timeline on it because in, you know, I see people talk about goal setting and they're like, oh, if you don't put a timeline on it, then it's, you know, you're just hoping. And I'm like, well, get fucked. That's not true. Because if I put a timeline on something, let's say, so so our one big thing at the moment is, which is actually heard me talk about, is we're building, I, I want to build a um, hundred grand a month recurring uh, income stream, right? So I want it, I want a hundred grand locked in at the start of the month, right? We've had hundred grand months at the end of the month. I want that at the start of the month for the consistency. Um, and that's our one big thing right now. So we sell that directly and everything that we do is congruent with achieving that one big thing. Okay. Now, if I said, I want to do that by Christmas, right? Here's what's going to happen is myself, the team are going to sell to people because they have to, in order to hit an arbitrary self-imposed timeline. Mm -hmm. And they're going to sell to people that I don't want to work with. They're going to sell to people that are going to drain my energy. And we may hit, we may hit our number, but because they've sold to people that we don't want to work with that are a pain in the ass, right? It's probably not going to last. That's if we even get there. It may even blow up before that because Jake goes, there is no way I'm getting on the call with these people that you've sold to. Right. So putting a timeline on things has consequences as well. Right. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong. This is just what's worked for me. So I picked that one big thing. I don't put a timeline on it. I buy into my own media that it's not if it's when. And then I'm like a dog after a bone until I get that one big thing. Everything that I do is congruent with it directly or indirectly. And I just don't stop until I achieve that thing, right? Like dream car, 100 days, no, 18 months. I got there. Next thing was legendary. I wanted to be a 100K affiliate. Took six months. It wasn't if, it was when. I'll, I'll figure it out. And, and I can't instill self-confidence in you. That has to come from within. And the best way to get self-confidence isn't chanting and ranting and raving. It's to... Tell yourself you're going to do something and then actually fucking do it. And if you do that every day, you'll build self-confidence. And when you build self-confidence, you'll trust yourself more. And when you trust yourself more, you can start to set these big goals. Other people might question them. Other might, people might think you're crazy, but you can just sit in your office and giggle because you know that you're going to get it. And so that's what I've just done consecutively. It was legendary. Then it was KBB. Then it, when we started SAA, it was like, it, I, you can ask Jamie and Chris. I was like, well, this will win a two comic club because that was the next thing I wanted to do. Didn't know when. Took 13 months, 14 months. Um, then I had a gap where I didn't know what my one big thing was and I felt like a lost puppy. I was like, oh, I don't know where I'm going. Like, I need this thing to focus on. <laughs> and then I found it and now I'm like, all right, let's go. So that's it for me is figure out that big thing. Don't necessarily put a timeline on it. Um but you become relentless about it and you'll get there. And and then people will go, how did you do it? Oh, I didn't give myself an option of not doing it. For sure. That's my tip. That's a good answer, man. That 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 that, that was, a, I like where the direction where this went. You mentioned also, um, you mentioned that you would answer this differently for somebody else though. So so what would your answer be for that? Um, I was just going to say, it really, it, it depends on, um, okay, the you. pathway that you want to take, but that's getting more strategic and tactical. I think the overall mentality that I kind of answered with is, is pretty universally applicable. Cool. Cool. All right. So we got another, uh, um, you know, feeding off the whole affiliate thing. Uh, someone said, I am an affiliate for a while now and have a good understanding of what to do, but still all over the place and struggling getting eyes on me. What would be your advice? Um, I have a good understanding of what to do, but still all over the place. So I think there's two different questions there. Um, one may be causing the other. If you're all over the place, that may be why you're struggling to get eyes on you. Um, if we put the all over the place to the side for a second and just zero in on the struggling to get eyes on me, it doesn't matter what strategy you're using. I don't care if you're using groups. I don't care if you're using YouTube. If you increase your output, 
output or your input, depending on which way you want to look at it, you'll, you'll get more back, right? If you're doing X of a certain thing, if you do more of it, you'll get more back, right? Whenever people come to me and they're like, I'm not making as much money as I want to make, how many offers did you make last month? Yeah. It's never as much as you expect. And if you just go, okay, well, make more, right? Then you can act, okay, so we, we want to make twice as many offers, right? Now we need to generate more opportunities. So you reverse engineer back from the point of sale and go, okay, we made 10 offers last month. We want to make 20 this month. Could we have made 20, right? Did we have the lead flow, the conversation flow to make 20 offers? Yes or no? If we did, sweet. Let's just capitalize on the traffic flow that we've got. If not, we go one step further back. Okay, we need to generate more leads. How do we generate more leads? We initiate conversations, right? Do we have an extra 10 people in our audience or, or you know, there's going to be a, a dilution effect. Do we have an extra 50 people in our audience that we can reach out to? Most people do, right? But if no, then we go back one step. Okay, we need to generate more audience members so we can generate more conversation opportunities so that we can present more offers. So struggling to get eyes on me would just be whatever the process is that you're following to get any eyes, do more of it. The all over the place might mean you're trying to do too many process, processes. So maybe trim it back to one until it's working. And then my advice to people typically when it comes to diversification and adding different things is only add it when you can do it without it compromising the original thing. So go back to one, get that rolling, do that at volume such that it's actually producing your result and then look at exploring other opportunities. For sure. Cool. All right, man. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a quick look if there's any other questions. I think we might've gotten to all of them for anyone who is tuning in. Let me know. I see like 20 of you are still with me live here. So if you tuned in all the way till now, I want you to drop a hashtag still here in the comments and a quick reminder. If you haven't grabbed your free ticket, for the cult builders live summit yet we're getting started november 14th to 18th it takes just a couple seconds to snag your free ticket there's a link above this video or somewhere in the caption of this video go and click that put in your name and email get your free ticket so that you don't miss out on the event you're going to get an offer to upgrade to a vip all access pass that's fully optional however i do recommend you do it that way you can get access to all of the recordings catch all the sessions. You don't have to miss out on anything. And I recommend you do it now because it is the price is going to go up in a couple of days. You might forget to do it before then. So make sure to check out that link. Uh, let me just quickly scan here, see if I missed any, any questions that came in while we were talking. I do see one person asked me if there's going to be a replay of this video because they tuned in a little bit and they're at work though. So they can't really watch it in depth. Yeah. I'm going to leave this up in the group. So this video it will be here in the group. If you guys want to rewatch it, if you want to tag your friends, you want to tag your family, you want to tag your children so that they can learn how to do this stuff. <laughs> it's up to you. It's up to you. Um, but it's going to be here for you. So just, just maybe bleep that. out the swearing if you're going to tag your kids in it. <laughs> My bad. I get excited. Right. I can't help it. No worries, man. No worries. We're all adults here. So, um, so let's see what we got. Any other questions? Lucky ones who invested early, unlimited JC coaching for $38 per month. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not available anymore. No more coaching from Jacob for 38 bucks a month. Jamie Jamie always jokes that he got in on that deal and that he's still hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. All right. I think we got to all the comments. Cool, man. You know what? In that case, what we're going to do, because it's like it, it, it's getting later for me. I know my wife is waiting for me right now. Um, so we, we wanted to go out for a walk and stuff. So I want to go enjoy some fresh air because I've been inside all day putting in work. Uh, so, so we'll, we'll put a pin in it here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate having all of you and Jacob. Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate all Pleasure. the stuff that you shared and spending your morning with us here today. Anybody who is watching on the replay, let me know if you're here as well. Just drop a hashtag replay in the comments. I'd love to know who consumes this content, even if it's later. And if you do have questions you want to ask, even if you're on the replay, we are going live again in the actual summit, November 14th. So come tune in with us. Go grab your free ticket. The link is above or somewhere around this video. Take you a couple seconds. And also, if you want to promote, I want to get extend, an, uh, extend the invitation to all of you. We already got like, I don't know how many affiliates we have now. Something like 140, 150 affiliates. It's a lot of people that are spreading the propaganda for us about this event. <laughs> and, um, and, and 
And it's only been, a, it was a week ago, Tuesday, last Tuesday, that I publicly opened up the affiliate program when I first went live with your community, actually, Jacob. And since then, we've signed up over 500 people to the event. I don't know what the number is now because I looked at it this morning, but we had crossed 500 people today. Um, you know, for the VIP pass, which is just a $75 product, we've sold over 7K in sales with some of that being upsells as well. Uh, but basically my point is, is if you want to capitalize this uh, uh, as an opportunity for you as an affiliate, you get to just promote this free event. People are going to get a ton of value. You know, there's, we got 16 badass speakers that people already know about. I keep getting comments from people when they see the lineup asking me how I got all these people together <laughs> to come and do these trainings over the course of just a single week. So he bribed us. <laughs> exactly. I bribed them. So the, the event really sells itself and you have the opportunity to promote this free event. People are going to hear about it anyways. People are already hearing about it. They sign up to the event through you, through your affiliate link. If they end up purchasing the VIP pass, any upsells on the back end of that, you will be able to earn the commissions, either 40% if you just sign up as an affiliate or if you purchase the VIP pass yourself, which is only $75 right now, you can actually earn 80% commissions which means you can make, depending on what they buy in the funnel, you could actually make up to close to a grand per person who you're referring to just a free event. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool campaign we got going on right now. Great opportunity for you guys. If you want to get in on the affiliate program, just leave a comment. You can drop hashtag affiliate in the comments here, and I will get back to you with a link to sign up as an affiliate because you do have to separately sign up and grab your affiliate link. Uh, and then we can get you in, we can get you, you know, your link, you can start promoting and get, I can start paying you some commissions. So with that said, we'll call it a night or we'll call it a morning if you're in Australia and, and we'll catch you guys on the live summit. Awesome. Yeah, have a good night. Take care.